On today's Fixing Bugs and Stuff, we're going to install the heater channels. Okay, the first thing I did was um, put the back end on a dolly. It's a furniture dolly I got from um, Harbor Freight. It can hold about a thousand pounds. In the back of your beetle, it's less than that. Uh, it's just got some casters on it. You want to be able to move it back and forth, uh, left to right, uh, forward and aft. I uh, add primer down into this channel. I spray it down in here. Uh, primer, there was no really issue. It's very minute surface rust. But I just want to protect it, so I put a, um, a primer sealer on there so it wouldn't have any further rust. And I did the same thing on the other side. As you can see the spray's coming up. Again, this, this car is gonna be a, a patina, so I really don't care about uh, the paint itself. It's gonna look worn. Um, it's just my, my preference. Anyway, so we're kind of getting in the prep stage of lifting up this chassis. People call it chassis or frame or, or floor pan, but uh, we're in the process of doing that. And before we do that, I'm going to install the heater hoses that go up to the uh, defroster. So make sure you do that first, because it's very hard to put in once the chassis is up in place. Well, actually, once the heater channel is up in place, it's very hard to lower that that uh, tube down in here. It's not easy, but I'm gonna put it in ahead of time and I'll show you what I'm using. You can see here, I have like this tubing. It's an exhaust tubing. I got it from Amazon for like 14 bucks and it's inch and a half um, ID inside diameter. And this is about inch and a half, maybe a little smaller. And it fits right on top of here. I didn't want to go with the paper stuff that Volkswagen has because it ends up ripping, um, it gets brittle, it falls apart. If you can see it here, I mean, this one's 50 years old, but I mean, it's okay, but it will rip. Please, no, 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 no. This will not, unless you really do some damage. Anyway, I'm gonna cut this in half and then I'm going to install it. Uh, well, the first thing you do is run it through here, down, and this is flexible. It does move. Um, let me show you. I'm trying to do this one-handed. It does flex, and it kind of keeps its shape. Let me flex it here. All right. It kind of keeps its shape. So, let me install this. Hard to do it one-handed. Um, let me do it with both hands. Feed it through. And I'll show you the results. Okay, I fed the tube through. Um, it's sitting in here. It's turned out pretty good. It's turned out pretty tight. Uh, you don't have to add any silicone or anything like that. It should be just fine. Uh, it's kind of like a little bit of an interference fit, but it's not bad at all. It slips right on. So that worked out well. And if you want to see on the inside what it looks like, they kind of stick out here. Just make sure you route them correctly. Um, but we're going to have to watch those because as we bring the body down, they're going to kind of like stick out. So we're going to have to trim them because I know they're going to be too long anyway. Next step we're going to do is um, once that's installed, we're going to start lifting up this chassis and then lining up with the holes. Okay, I have some hardware here. I have the old hardware that I'm going to be using to attach the chassis. And we're going to use these as guides. So the way it's going to go is I'm going to lift up on the chassis and then try to line it up with these holes like that. Um, some guys use dowels, which is a great idea just to get alignment correctly. That way you see what you're doing. 
Um, I don't have any wooden dowels, but I'm gonna try to do it first try and see how it works. What you wanna make sure is that as you bring it up, you wanna clear this firewall. Sometimes the firewall gets in the way or binds up. So just wanna make sure that it's out of the way. This firewall is still, it's not totally attached. It's still flimsy. So I put a block of wood underneath here. Start lifting up. All right, see where we're at. How close are we? Are we way off? Yeah, a little bit off. But we're not there yet. Let's keep going. So now you can see the body starting to move. So I'm gonna bring it down. I forgot what's binding. I'm gonna have to move the chassis left to right. You can move the chassis left to right using the jack. See here, left to right. Just to clear out some stuff. But this is kind of dangerous to do with one hand. So let me put you down. And then um, I'll show you what I'm gonna do next. Oh, I forgot um, to mention about the heater channels. Yeah, you want to bolt these on before you do anything else. I forgot, totally forgot to mention that. Uh, definitely bolt on your heater channels. Uh, it doesn't, doesn't have to be tight, tight. Just snug them up enough. My suggestion is start with the two bolts during the front here. So I can show you underneath. These two bolts here. You wanna start with those and then work your way back. Takes this hardware here. Goes right in that channel. So snug these up. Definitely use these. Uh, make sure it's all tight before you start putting it together. And uh, let me continue to Keep uh, raising it up. Well, I eyeballed it getting in there. I didn't even use uh, these screws to line it up. Um, I eyeballed it and it went in just perfectly, as you can see. It's a little uh, going this direction. It's going that direction a little bit, but that makes sense because the back half is uh leaning down and once the other once the back half comes up it should come towards the middle so um at this point the jacket's still underneath of it it's still up but i want to secure it so i'm going to use the old hardware put it in and i'm going to snug both of these down once i'm get them installed not tight tight just so they don't back out because you want them to be loose enough so you can move the chassis around Still. They're snugged up and now I'm gonna release the uh, the jack. So now it's hanging by those two bolts. And you see how close this, uh, just to point it out, if it's really close to the body here, we can have a shortened beam. And I, I have a video on the shortened beam and why I picked it. But you can see both sides, it's really close. But it's hanging there by those two. So if this is rotten out for you and you need to replace this, I would replace it before you start hanging your chassis off of this because they will rip. So let's take a look at the inside where we're at. Like, man, there's a huge gap there. Yeah, there is. We have to bring up the body, the other half. The other half of the body. So that'll be next. It should close up that gap. And uh, I'll show you that here in a minute. Okay, you can see where I put my jack underneath that brace. That brace right there, you can see. So I'm gonna start jacking it up and make sure I clear this guy here. These rear cross members. Very important to clear that. So that's what I'm gonna do now. Just jack her up. And again, I can't do this one-handed. Um, 
basically I'm going to jack it up. I'll clear the recross members and then show you after that. Kind of jacked it up halfway. You can see the rear cross members are getting close, are mating up. Um, so far, so good. Everything's clearing, and I'm going to continue on. <laughs> Okay, so I'm really close. So coming here, I'm about uh, about an inch away. So to ensure that I'm coming in in the center as best as possible, I want to stick this screw in here and see where we're at. It's not too bad. It's almost center. It's a little off, but we're on this jack here, so we, we can move it left to right if we need to. So let me install it on the other side. Well, it's hard for me to install on this side because it's more, it's going in that direction. So I'm gonna have to bring the jack a little bit this way. I'm working with the jack, it's pretty easy. Take the jack and you just move it, um, just move it to the left. Moving the jack to the left, less than a quarter of an inch. And now it sits in the middle. I finished putting the screw in. All right, it's looking good so far. Okay, so we're very close here. So the next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go inside and check on the cross members. Uh, they're sitting pretty good. Uh, here's the slot for it. It's a little off, but not too bad. So I'm gonna put some bolts in to hold it in place. I'll leave them loosely though. I'm only doing this so it doesn't come out. Yeah, it's always one, give me a fuss. Oh. All right, so we got those four in. I just wanna make sure it doesn't move. Uh, I'm gonna button it up a little bit more. Go slowly, just do a little bit at a time. Make sure this is adjusted. Let me continue on. Okay, so you want to make sure that your rear cross members are in. I have jacked it up all the way. Everything's nice and tight. Um, these all line up pretty good, as you can see. All look good. So, um, we're going to tighten those down. So this doesn't move anymore. But first, you wanna make sure that this hole lines up into the chassis. Just take a screwdriver, just gently, you can move it around. It's still loose, even though it's jacked up all the way, cause this is flimsy. Everything's flimsy around here. And do the same thing on the other side. Once that's lined up, then tighten these down. It'll keep them in position. Okay, now I put those bolts in. I basically call them aligning bolts. That's one on the other side. I know that's a freaky bolt. Freaky bolt. What happened was they use it for the same thing as an engine bolt and they end up welding a nut to the end of it so it wouldn't move as they tighten down the nut to fasten the engine. As you guys know, it's weird. Weird but clever. Anyway. Next thing we're gonna do, we're going to lift the chassis along with the body and put it on jack stands. Okay, now the chassis is on jack stands here. And that means, you can see it in the back as well, it's on jack stands. It means that the body, the weight of the body is on the chassis. And this helps too if you need to pick it up or move it or do a little bit of adjustment if things are not right. Um, I don't have much movement here in the front. Um, let's see here how these bolts are still in, no problem. So if you have to adjust the body a little bit in this position, be great. Um, just loosen the bolts, don't take them out, just loosen them 
and then you can shift the body around the way you want. But we can walk around, see how things look. Thus far. So. Uh, door looks good. A little bit of a gap here, but no, no big deal. We can put that gap in. This looks good as well. Bolts are still in. Everything's still aligned. Let's go on the other side. Now this is lining up pretty well. Lines up pretty good. Lines up pretty good. So we talked about the gap in here. Of course, there's a gap in there. Doesn't have the uh, the rubber gasket in there. So that'll close up that gap. But all else looks good. So far, that's where I've gotten. Again, I'm doing this by myself and I know it takes a lot of steps to do it, doing it by yourself and I am limited in space. I mean, look how close I am to the garage door. So it can be done. So the next step would be, uh, again, button things down, meaning that I'll torque things down uh, like the front mounts and the rear mounts or torque them down. Uh, we'll see after that. Okay, just out of curiosity, I installed the door. Um, fits in pretty well. I can open and close it pretty well too. Um, it's not bad at all. Shut. And then I'm going to weld this pillar here. This guy here. Now, I'm gonna do it with the door closed. Now my experience is, is um, this still moves, as you can see it, if you can see it or not. If you lift the door up in and out, um, this is still wobbly. I'm gonna weld this post in with the door closed and aligned, and I'm gonna weld this post in to make sure it's good. Okay, I welded that side, it's not complete. I also did the run on that side too. Um, so definitely it's gonna stay in place. I'm gonna put the door on, which is sitting right here. I'll put the door on, um, make sure it's all aligned, and then I'll weld again. spot weld it there um, no problems there and that should hold it in place there okay here's a recap of what I've been doing so what I did was I put on the doors I put the door on the driver's side door on the passenger side and I want to install them before I kind of spot weld the uh, heater channel in place. Now, the doors are aligned. You can see here that uh, the line matches up pretty well. Uh, the gap looks great. No issues there. Um, opens and closes just fine. No issues there. Uh, let's look on the other side. Looking at the passenger side, it's a little tight over here because I have my toolbox and other things. Um, but this one shuts fine too. Let's shut it. No issues there. Um, just a slight misalignment here, but we can fix that with shims. However, the, the gap is perfect. So I'm not sure if I'm going to touch it at all. So you definitely want to put your doors on first before you start welding anything, because you can actually weld the body onto the heater channels incorrectly. And everything be out of whack, be all warped and whatnot. And you don't want that. That's a nightmare. So let's look in here further and show you what I've done. I spot welded the rear cross member, 
those if you can see it or not back there then i spot welded a couple places on the cross member here i just want to keep it in place because eventually you have to take these bolts out so just mainly for movement did the same thing on the passenger side here seam welded there the heater channel uh spot welded there we cross member there <laughs> So, in theory, here we go in theory, in theory, what do you guys think? Technically, I can remove these braces, see these braces in here? I can remove these braces and the doors should close properly. And I'm also going to solve the mystery of, does the chassis help the door stay aligned? Or does the chassis not help the door stay aligned? So we're going to solve that mystery now. So I'm going to cut these braces out. Okay, the braces are cut. Just laying here on the floor pans. So let's check the doors. Yeah. Door still shut nicely. Very nice. Let's go to the other side. Let's check it out. See if this door shuts nicely. Yep. All looks good. All looks good. Everything shuts good. Opens good. Shuts good. Okay. Now, let's solve this mystery. We're going to take off chassis well the chassis also acts as a cross member to everything else it lines everything else so it is a structural member of the car so what will happen is you'll drop the chassis and it will misalign the doors so i'm going to prove that because a lot of people say oh no it just it doesn't do that once you put the heater channels in, it stays aligned. That's not true. So, I will show you that. Okay, this is the final piece. Um, the chassis is separated from the body. No problems there. Um, on both sides, I'll just show you. Came down pretty easy. No issues. However, we're gonna solve the mystery of having the uh, chassis part of the doors being aligned. And here we go. We're gonna try the driver's side. Again, I haven't opened up the doors yet. So let's see. Open up the door. Uh-huh. See how it jumps down? And now it doesn't shut. So definitely, your chassis or your floor pan or whatever you want to call it is part of the structural integrity of the car. Let's check out the passenger side. Let's see here. It's heading to. So there you have it. You got to have the floor pan on to adjust your doors. This is not even shutting. There we go. You gotta have your floor pan on or your chassis to adjust your doors correctly um, or else it's not gonna work. Um, you, of course, once you add weight to the door, it's gonna get a little worse. You're probably gonna have to shim it. What I mean by weight, you're gonna have to add hardware. Um, these already have the glass in it. Uh, be mindful of that. If you don't have any glass or if it's really light, it's gonna be different once you put the weight on. It's gonna it's gonna bow a little bit, so you're gonna have to shim it a little bit. Um, again, door panels, hardware, glass, and then if you add deadening material, that adds weight too. So your doors will sag. So you probably have to adjust them a little bit again, but not too much. Anyway, this concludes the video. Uh, heater channels are in. It's the whole purpose of installing them 
They're not fully installed. I still have to weld the rest of it in, but they're installed. So please like, subscribe, and comment. And thank you for watching.